yes uh hello hello there uh today i'm going to give you some explanation about uh, internal tcp and or udp load balancing it's one of the service that uh, google cloud platform offers for you for you yes uh what is this uh it's a regional load balancer that enable and run scale your service behind a private load balancing IP address that is only accessible within your internal virtual machine instance. Uh, let's use some of you view of this this service. This is a uh, internal uh, Google Cloud Platform internal TCP and UDP load balancing is uh, enables you to distribute your your uh, traffic for your let's say application among your VM instance, but it only on the same region of in in your VPC network. And, and it uses a uh, internal IP address. Let's see here. Uh, as shown on the diagram, uh, an internal load balancing IP, uh, internal load balancing service uh, has a for forward uh, front end, which is this uh, forwarding rules, and it has a back end, which is this uh, instance group, as you can see here. And uh, let's see. Uh, sorry. Well, it is using a wrong. Okay, and yes, that's that is basically what is internal load balancing is. It will uh distribute your your traffic within your instance within your internal network. Well, uh, let's talk about the protocol theme and scope. Uh, it's it, and the load balancing is using whether TCP or UDP, but uh, it can be both and uh, an internal tcp udp load balancer use a single backend service within an internal load balancing system what does that mean is that uh, it will balance the traffic within your gcp across your instance but this is cannot use to balance traffic that originate from from the internet uh yes it's it's basically just uh, will balance your internet uh, your your network within your your vm instance not from outside outside network external network something like that uh, and the third is the scope of the internal tcp or udp load balancer is regional not global what that mean is that uh, internal tcp udp load balancer uh, you cannot span it across the multiple region it only can be uh, used in within a single region and uh, load balancer surface uh, within the single region but the but it can be uh, using in uh, different zones uh, if you haven't heard about zones and region in gcp uh, basically just like uh, one region has multiple zones like for example uh, there's a region called us central and the us central is uh, having have three three zones like us central a us central b and us central c and in the load balancer uh, in this internal balancer you can use that that internal balancer within the region and you can span it across multiple zone but not in multiple region like for example you cannot using like uh, us central and us west and us north uh, something like that use cases uh okay third is use cases uh when you can use uh this internal balancer let's say uh we have a three tier web service uh, what this looks like it's for like this. let's say uh, you can use your uh, TCP and UDP load balancing in conjunction with other load balancer uh, such as HTTPS load balancer which I have demonstrated in other video where uh, and where this is uh, let's say your website using uh, this this load balancer the external load balancer and your your surface where then after this uh, external load balancer you can uh, your service can realize on other three behind uh, three internal balancer yes uh, it's yes just like this okay next how uh, an internal tcp and load balancing characteristic uh, <coughs> load balancing load balancer is a managed service 
and it's not a, a, a proxy and it's only implement in the virtual network and there's no intermediate device or single point of value and the response from the back end VM is goes directly to the client not back through the load balancer again uh, basically uh, unlike a device based or internal based load balancer an internal TCP or UDP load balancing does not terminate connection from the client instead of a traffic being sent to the load balancer then going to the back end the traffic is directly sent to the back end like jumping it's not like it's it's not like uh there's no uh there's no rotation yeah, it's kind of like jumping from the from the client and jumping to the back end not really going to the load balancer itself uh the tcp uh, linux or window gas environment configure its vm with the ip address of the load balancer and the tcp uh, virtual networking manage the traffic delivery okay now let's just talk about the architecture uh, internal load balancer with the multiple backend instance group distribute the connection among your your, your backends vm in all instance group you can use uh, any type of instant group it can be uh, unmanaged instant group or manage soon instant group or manage and or yeah whatever instant group here, you can be used but uh, uh yes and uh instant that participate instant group uh, instance vm let's say that participate uh, as a became vm for the internal tcp or udp balancer must be running the appropriate uh, linux case environment or you can use window also or another process that provide an equivalent functionality uh, for instance let just you can uh, for the save you can use just uh, like the mv templates for all the all of your vm so that's make sure that all of your vm is provide equivalent functionality and yes that's it uh, Talk about high availability. High availability. Uh, the internal TCP and UDP load balancer is highly available by by the design. There's no special step to make this load balancer is highly available because just it's uh high availability high highly available by the default. There's a uh, two best uh best practice to deploy your backend VM instance. So you are not uh, reliant on a single zone. First, you can use a uh, regional managed instant group. Uh, basically, if you can deploy your software using instant template, regional managed instant group will auto automatically distribute traffic among multiple zones. Like it will provide the best option to avoid potential issue from any given zones. Uh, and if you are using a zonal managed instant group, then or or unmanaged instant group you can use multiple instant group in the different zone but but the same region for the backend service uh it will protect again potential issue in any given zones uh, and now let's uh talk about component what's component of uh internal balancer uh it has an internal ip address of course and it has an internal forwarding rules uh, and uh, internal backend service and a uh, health check okay so let's talk about internal IP address yes uh, internal uh, IP address is basically just uh, it will your your old balancer will use an internal IP address from the primary ring of your subnet subnet from your uh, let's say VPC VPC network and when you when you create an internal forwarding rule well, uh, which I will talk about later the IP address can be from a secondary range of the subnet. You can use uh, the IP address for for an internal. You can use specify IP address for your internal web balancer when you create a forwarding rule. And next is a forwarding rule. Is at least you have to have one of internal forwarding rule in the subnet in the same region as the backend service. What does that mean? Is um. 
an internal forwarding tool must be in the same region as the load balancer backend service. Uh, the forwarding load is where you define the ports on which uh, the load balancer will accept any traffic from any other VM instance. Let's say uh, internal load balancer uh, are not proxy, so they will pass to the backend on the same port in on which traffic uh, is received. So you must specify at least one port number per forwarding rules. In addition to port, uh, you have to specify a subnet in your VPC network when you create uh, an internal forwarding rules. And the subnet you specify for the forwarding rules does not have to be the same as any of the subnet used by your backend VMs. Uh, however, the forwarding rule subnet and the backend must all on the same region. Uh, you have to understand this. When you create an internal forwarding rule, uh, GCP will cause and will choose an available IP address from your primary IP address range of your of your subnet of your uh, VPC. Uh, forwarding rules and port specification. Uh, you have to specify at least one up to five ports by number, and you can specify all to the traffic. Uh, on all ports, uh, creates an internal forwarding rule that support uh, all all ports in order to forward the all the traffic for a given protocol. Let's say uh, a TCP to a single internal load balancer. Uh, in this case, this will allow the backend VMs to run on multiple application on one per port. Uh, traffic that sends to a given port is delivering to a correspondence application and all application will use the same IP address and there's a you, you can also uh, the forwarding rule you are creating is you can create multiple forwarding rules you can configure a multiple internal forwarding rules for the same internal load balancer uh, and each forwarding rule must have its own unique IP address you can reference uh, only. You can only reference a single backend service. Multiple uh, internal forwarding rules can reference uh, to the same backend service. When you configure a multiple forwarding rules, uh, it can be very useful if you need more than one IP address for the same internal TCP and UDP load balancer, or if you need to associate a certain port within an IP address. It can be very useful when you're using multiple internal forwarding rules uh, you have to make sure that you configure that the software running on your backend vm so that it will be uh, it will binds to all uh, necessary ip address because the destination ip address for the packet that deliver through the load balancer is an internal ip address associated with the respective uh, for internal forwarding rules uh yeah so that's basically uh about the multiple forwarding rules if you're concerned about it if you want to make multiple rules and yeah that's it the next is a uh, backend service with our talk in the next session so bye